yeah. Um, yeah, no, just to follow up from Tuesday's game, obviously tough loss. I'm still feeling the effects of it. I haven't slept. I didn't sleep Tuesday night and uh, haven't got good sleep Wednesday or Thursday night. Just it's, it, it still eats at me. Um, those are games, you know, those are hard games to lose like that. But you got to move on and turn the page and get ready for the for the next game. <clears throat> and so we're locked in on Pitt. And obviously, spent a lot of time in preparation for Pitt. Very good basketball team. They they uh, have had a great year. Coach Capel, to his credit, has just you know has them playing at a very very high level. I mean, they started the year. I think they were one and three to start. I had a couple tough losses, and they just you know. A week ago, they were competing for they were competing for first place in the ACC, and um, that's a credit to Coach Capel and his staff. And they got a good, really good players. Um, they're playing at a high level, and um, we'll have to you know we'll have to play really really well. They had you know they've lost two tough ones with Clemson, uh, Clemson and North uh, Duke, uh, but they had some great wins. I mean they they've beaten Virginia, which is very hard to do, and beat North Carolina and one at NC State and one at Syracuse and they beat I mean just blistered Northwestern who's you know they're playing very well so um, you know uh, guys like you know coach Capel and coach Brunell or would be you know those two would you know be the leading guys for ACC coach of the year at this point you know one of those two would Deservingly get it if it was if the if the awards were today, and um, or or both of them become co-head co-ACC you know coach of the year at this point. So um, <clears throat> uh, we'll have to play really well. There's no doubt about that. I don't know if Javon Franklin or Davon Smith will be able to play. Both are sick. Uh, Javon did not practice yesterday. Don't expect him to practice today. Davon did practice yesterday, but was really sick today. So. Um, him and Davon and Javon will be questionable to tomorrow for tomorrow's game. Maybe doubtful, just depending on how they feel. Davon, we're going to see if Javon how he's feeling this afternoon. He was not feeling good this morning. He didn't feel good yesterday either. But um, we'll just see how he's feeling. How he's feeling tomorrow. Rod, why don't you start us off? You you face another veteran team. I think they're one of. I read they're one of four teams in the NCAA that has four more players that have played over 125 games in their college career. So it's, uh, again, they're, they're well, not going to be a team that's going to make a lot of mistakes. Notre Dame was like that. I think Notre Dame was the other one of the other four teams. You know, yeah. There's a lot of guys in this league that, and I've said this, um, it's not, and, you know, due to, due to NIL and due to the additional COVID year, um, a lot of these guys shouldn't be playing in college basketball anymore. Um, Again, that's just that's just you know I, I that is what it is, and so I mean the age difference between a lot of these guys is really incredible. And uh, that being said, you got to go on the floor and go and, and and get the job done. Whether you're you know playing guys who are six year seniors, multiple six year seniors, or or not, you gotta you gotta get the job done. So, um, um, <clears throat> you know, and that's and that's been part of the change of the college landscape has been the you know with the NIL and the COVID additional year all at once. And so, um, um, and that's why, you know, uh, you know, we've had some chances on a couple games that we just, you know, we've won a couple close ones, but we've lost a couple close ones. You know, we lost the Utah one earlier in the year and we lost obviously Notre Dame and, um, you know, obviously we won a close one in Georgia and in, in, in Georgia State and, and Miami, but, um, you know, we've we've had a couple others that that maybe the score wasn't indicated on on like I felt like Iowa and that we had we just the offensive rebounding part. Obviously, we didn't play well against Clemson or Virginia, but um, <clears throat> Florida State. You know, I felt we were playing well, and then we just the floods opened up on us. So, you know, we just gotta we gotta just perform. We gotta perform. We gotta get the job done. Losing, winning's fun. Losing stinks. I love our I love our team, and and we're good enough to win a lot of games. But we gotta go. We gotta do it for 40 minutes. But but to answer your question, Rod, I mean, yes, this is an old team. Pittsburgh's old. I mean, they're old. And 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 on top of the job that Coach Capel has done, because like I said, him or Brad Brunell should be ACC co-coaches 
right this point of the of ACC Co Coach of the Year. Um, uh, on, but on top of that, he has a lot of older guys. And, and I've, how many times have I said it? Being old and staying old and getting getting old and staying old is one of the great ways to try to win in this league. And that's I think that's been proven throughout the course of the teams. I guess kind of how do you adjust? You know, Javon's such a critical part of your team with the rebounding and his offensive and the putbacks and. Being able to, to kind of do some things, and, and also Jalen Moore, is he going to be healthy? Jalen, Jalen will be good to play. Um, I'm, look, I'm hoping Javon and Davon will be able to play Kelly. Um, so it's because it's not a um, like a knee or an ankle thing. It's not a uh, an injury. You know, it's uh, a physical. You got you get what I'm trying to say. It's you know, it's more of a just going to be how they feel tomorrow morning when they. On how they feel tomorrow is—is is it just a 24-hour bug? Obviously, I'm hoping Davon's just 24 hours. So tomorrow, you know, he'll be better. And Javon, I was hoping it would be 24 hours. He's still feeling the effects, but we'll need both guys if they're able to play. And a lot would be to just return tomorrow at shoot around if they can how they're how they're feeling. Um, in regards to what you're saying about playing for 40 minutes, uh, the I was looking at it, particularly you saw it at the end of the second half, but the the. The plays coming out of timeouts, whether it's called timeouts or, or or TV timeouts, it seemed like you could have done a little more there. Do you go back and look at those situations specifically and say like we could have done something differently or things <clears throat> along those lines? Um, uh, two things, Ken. Uh, one is, you know, if you look at our if you if you look at our success rate, we've been very successful coming out of timeouts. Uh, unfortunately, the Notre Dame game, we didn't have as much success as we we uh, we wanted. Um, prior to that game, you know, it, even in our seven years here, we've been pretty. We've done a nice job of coming out of timeouts and scoring at a high clip of, we call them ATOs, you know, after timeout plays, and we've been we've actually been one of the better ones in the league at doing that. Um, whether it's a half court play, base out of bounds, side out of bounds, we've been we've been really good at that. Notre Dame, we had a couple miscues, some lack of execution, um, and. Um, um, we got to be better about that, and and I take full responsibility because you know obviously if if something was miss you know not executed you know was my was my words as clear as needed to be was it were, did everyone fully understand as they left the huddle did I not repeat myself enough you know and um, um, so that's something that that um, you know unfortunately last game we didn't we didn't do a good job at which falls on nobody else but. That doesn't fall on anybody else but me. And uh, prior to that, like I said, we've been we've been very successful in our not only for this year but for our time here. And when we keep track of that and chart that, and there's numbers out there for that. That, and we've had a high success rate on ATOs. Just Notre Dame game, we didn't didn't do a good job on that. And and so that that also cost me a lot of sleep because that uh, and just a lot of agonizing uh, because we take great pride in. In producing on ATOs, and I think, like I said, we do, we've done a good job of that in our time here. Really good job. But Notre Dame game, we didn't do a good job, and it. And um, you know, I and I look back that I just not. I mean, you know, usually I'm repeating myself, as you know. And I just was I did I make sure everyone knew exactly where they needed what was what who they what who are they looking for first, what what they had to do. Did I did I just maybe brush it off assuming they understood what I was saying and maybe not I didn't I didn't go through it I'm pretty good about going through it three four five six times and I don't know if I did that you know so that falls on me going back to the the two players that are sick if they are able to play do you have to be careful about watching their minutes as far no. as conditioning if they can play we'll, we'll play to win I hope that I just want to win the game, win every possession. With your, and I asked Kyle about this, it seems like one or two guys are hot and everyone else is stone cold shooting threes. Goodness gracious. Game. we. What's going on there and is there anything you can, I mean, obviously. I, I, I don't, Kelly, do. we've, and we've gotten some really good looks. Um, you know, I know Ken asked me in the post game there in Notre Dame about going inside more and, and you know, we, we try to establish the first part of the game about points in the paint. But we, you know, we had a couple open, you know, just great looks from three, and we just um, didn't stick them. And uh, I thought we'd be a better shooting team to this point, Kelly. 
unfortunately, we're not the percentage that I thought we'd be, and that's obviously cost us a couple games. So, but we are a, we're very capable and are due to get hot. So, um, I'm uh, you know me being the internal optimist and positive about that. I, I I hope that we're able to. You know, it is a make and miss game, and you got to put the ball in the basket and. Two of your best shooters, Debo and Lance, row for ten from three. That's that's hard. That's that's hard. And we still had a chance to win the game. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, we we are up seven with two thirty to go. You know, we had some great looks, and um, yeah, you just got to make them. You you've been rebounding the ball fairly well. And, I, and, I, and before I, even, I would even say like Tristan's had some great looks too. And he's and you know I know he's a good shooter and we know he's a good shooter, and he's had some great looks. And um, there was a couple where Miles even who made a couple obviously, but he had a couple of looks that were really good that he he had one that was forced that wasn't a good look, but he had a couple that were that he misses that were open too. It's just um, um, you know we got we got enough to make them. I mean, it's, it's there's we, we we do need to make those shots that when we get that type of openness. Go ahead, Rod. You've been re rebounding the ball fairly well lately, and you look at Pitt; they're nine and one when they out rebound their opponents. So I imagine, you know, having your your mantra where the guards get on the boards. Well, that right type now, if thing. you look in ACC play, Davon's our leading rebounder. Yeah, which is a great thing for the guards. I believe in that. You know, guard rebounding. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to do a great job on the glass. You know, the, the numbers, and this is something to look at, the numbers outlie in the, during ACC play with rebounding because the one game where we didn't rebound offensive re – we've been a pretty good offensive rebounding team other than in North Carolina game, we didn't have any rebound, so offensive rebound. So, you know, we really focused on transition defense that game. I wish I could have done that over and just said, ah, screw it, just get to the glass because that has been that was part of our deal. And Javon didn't play that game other than the first few minutes he got injured. But um, – so it's a little bit of an outlier on that. We missed that one game with no offensive rebounds. But other than that, I think we've done a decent job of getting on the glass offensively. Thank Anything you. else? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Yep. Kelly, Ken, thanks for coming up to South Bend.